Hi there. Welcome to episode two of the Writing Drill Course. Uh, today's episode will focus on setting up the score and getting things prepared so that you can write effective drill. If you don't do what happens in this step, then you're just kind of guessing for the whole show and can put you in a spot where you have to do uh, copious rewrites or uh, just spending more time on things than you have to. On the screen, you see a couple of different things. You see the score to the show that we're working on called Opus. And then you also see on the left-hand side a uh, um, flow chart that I have come up with. We're going to go through the flow chart for the opening movement and uh, do that together so we can talk about things to watch out for. And then um, on your own, you're going to want to complete uh, movements two, three, and four. So this show was designed by Eric Rath and percussion by John Seal. They're both outstanding uh, writers. Uh, the things that I look at this show initially is we've got a lot of solos to start out with. Um, the way this show was designed um, in speaking with the arranger was uh, a way to f to highlight some outstanding soloists that the the group had while allowing other members to achieve at a high level without the demands of uh, the solo uh, moments. So we're going to watch out for things like that. Uh, we're going to look for transitional moments, moments where uh, maybe uh, things can develop visually. We're going to look for time changes, tempo changes, um, all sorts of um, things um, in this opening movement, which is, you see, you've got some rests and things like that in it as well. Let's take a little break here and listen to the opening movement.
All right, now that we've listened to the opener and gotten a feel for what's going on, I've got the score in front of me for the winds, and I also have the score for the percussion to kind of give us an idea of how to fill in these blanks on the uh, idea sheet on the, the flow chart. So we notice here at the beginning that it starts with um, brass. All the brass are playing except for the trumpets after a little bit. So we're going to just put a little idea here. We'll just call this set one. And when we get into writing drill, we may decide that we want more sets here. That's okay, but this is just idea one. And we're going to make this measures one through 16 until square one. Make this text. one through 16 um, and we're just going to put an idea there we're not going to fill anything else out we know up here at the top it's 2020 we're going to call this uh, drill writing school and uh, the show is opus and this is movement one okay. our next idea happens with the entrance of the woodwinds with the little solo group that we see here, and that's going to be 17 through 28. The next idea, everybody comes in for a, a nice big opening hit, and we're going to do that eight, uh, sorry, 29 through 45. The next section is 46 to the tempo change. Then we're going to put a little marker here, 54 to 55, when the tempo uh, ratchets up. Then when the Marriage of Figaro section starts here, we're just going to go from 4 to 5, and that's 56 to 66. 67. We're just going to go to each big number just as placeholders so we can kind of make thing make notes of what's happening. 73 to 80. 81 to 88. 89 to 96. 97 to 104 105 all the way to 114 115 to 124 125 to 132, 133 to 140, 141 to 149, 150 to 1, let's go all the way to the end on this one, so to 158. So there are 17 distinct sections that we're going to work with in this opening idea okay, in our flow chart. Now, one of the things that I recommend um, that when you're working with a client is that you have them take the score and print out a copy of the score and as they come up with ideas, write in the score ideas that they would like to have happen in the middle of it. Now this is a clean copy of the score. There's not much going on there. But I can show you this is what these all these files here are um, are comp comprised of what the director sent me before we wrote the show. 
So this is Egmont Overture that we are opening with, with Marriage of Figaro. And here are some ideas that the director came up with. Now, on this show, um, the garden um, choreography was written prior to writing the drill. That's not an ideal situation, but um, it was nevertheless done. So you have to work within those um, constructs sometimes. So um, he wrote this information. I'll put this up on the website so you can look at it as well. And you can see the measures that he broke it down to for movement one. Now we're using movement one and two uh, together because uh, I kind of saw them as one uh, cohesive idea. So they've got some pre-show ideas and soloists and who's playing what part and various things. For the purposes of what we are doing, we're going to create this on our own um, and kind of write down the ideas. We don't necessarily know what the guard's going to be doing, but we can fill that in later once we've written it um, to let the guard instructor know. And then we can give this flow sheet to the director um, so that as they're teaching it, they have an easy reference I, um, place as well as the drill for these ideas. So uh, measures 116 uh, opens with brass. Okay. Um, no woodwind playing. Okay. And then here at square one, woodwinds only playing. But you notice this is soloist only. Now, as you're writing these, um, you can format these so that you have wrap around text, um, wrap the text in there so that uh, you can fit more information. Now, what is the percussion doing right through here? Looking at the score. And what I'm talking about is mainly battery percussion, but we'll, we'll add some notes if there's a uh, feature for the uh, front ensemble. <coughs> <coughs> so we notice that until square two, there's no battery percussion being played. So we can just put none, or you can leave it blank. Moving on to 29 through 45, we have full 2D ensemble. And that goes all the way through 45. And then when we get to 46, woodwind solo group. Now you notice it's one on a part, so one bass clarinet, two first clarinets, a bassoon and an oboe. Well, we don't march bassoon and oboe, so they're going to come from probably the front ensemble or a drum major, and one flute. So we can go up here to the soloist only and see, okay, it's a little bit different solo group. So it's, um, let's just say, um, oboe, bassoon, clarinet one, we don't see a clarinet two, bass clarinet, alto sax one, alto sax two, tenor sax, very sax. Wow, that's a lot. So, but we want to make sure that we have that in there so we know exactly what. Now, this solo group at square four, I mean at square three, is flute, oboe, bassoon, two clarinet one, and bass clarinet. Now, chances are you'll probably just want to keep that same solo group from beginning staged there so you're not having another transition. But that's something we can talk about when we get into the design. 
we get to 54, 55 effect ideas. Tempo change. Hold so that the band can solidify um, their, their style. Nothing going on here. So we can leave those blank. Let's go back to percussion. Percussion enters at measure 29. So we can say battery enters. Now at measure 46, back to none. So we need to make sure that the battery is staged in a location that they can be heard. And we're not going to cause any um, sonic um, listening environment challenges. So we want to keep the battery uh, in between the 40s as we start that because the rest of the band is probably going to be um, near that area as well. Okay, moving on to 56. What do we have going on here? Oh, Marriage of Figaro. Got a small group. So small group of woodwinds. Now, depending on the ensemble, it could be the entire woodwind cluster, or it could be just um, a small uh, group. Now, what you could also do is this group up here at the top, whatever the small group is, um, stage them in a way that they can come close to add on to the group that's right here playing in these uh, solo groups for Egmont Overture. Okay, Small group of woodwinds to begin, then brass enters um, at measure 63. We get to measure 60, 56 to 66. Oh, that's 54 to 55. We want to move that to 56 to 66. 57 to 72. Sorry, 67 to 72. We have full 2D ensemble. Okay. Percussion at measure 67. It's back to full, back to enter. There's no solos, but we can just kind of put little markers there to let us know what's going on. Seventy-three. That should be seventy-three to eighty. We've got this small group playing. Okay, continuing their melody. So small group comes back in woodwinds. Brass does not play. Okay. We can use that as a setup to do something else. Now we want to be aware of the amount of demand that is being placed on any one student at any time. So if we've got this um, highly technical Marriage of Figaro thing happening, maybe we don't move them um, and we keep them um, in a nice staged area. Now we'll talk later about setting up the stage on the, on the football field and we're going to talk about having a prop that uh, can feature these soloists because there's a number of soloists um, in this symphony type um, show. So small group of woodwinds that happens back here at set six, um, we want to put them on stage to showcase. Okay, effect ideas back here, stage back as showcase. Okay, just so that we know exactly what's going on. When we get to 81, 2D woodwinds to start, then brass enters. Okay, battery are continuing the play. Ah, what's happened? Do you remember what's happening at measure 89? We have front ensemble moment. We can restage from measures. 89 
Now you look at this, there's one, two, three, four, five, six measures of um, silence in the winds, in the woodwinds, before we have this little interjection that happens. What I would recommend is 89 through 93, restage the woodwinds. Then have them stand still for 94, 95, and 96. So they have a measure to get their instruments up, they have a measure to get set and come in. So they're not having to stop marching and come in at measure 95. Um, that, that adds to the simultaneous demand that is placed on the students. We wanna make sure that it is as effective musically as possible as we can make it. Okay, we're going to continue this front ensemble moment. Okay, in this next set, some sort of drill from measures for woodwinds, measures 97 to 101, then they'll halt 102, and then do their interjection. I don't think that there's too much demand placed on um, finishing a run and then stepping off all on the same measure. Okay, measure 105 continues the front ensemble moment. Okay. We want to have uh, the brass enters at measure 111. So we want some sort of drill build here um, to get us to 114. This should be to 113. This should be to 114. Oh, I'm sorry. I was I was right the first time. Drill build to 115. And then we have full ensemble entering. So um, ensemble enters minus oboe and bassoon. So it's just full ensemble. And we want some sort of build continues. Okay, because we haven't gotten to a vertical moment yet. Ah, we're here at this forte. Um, Tutti, a lot of um, scoring that is um, not polyphonic here. It's very, um, everybody the same rhythm, um, everything going on the same thing. So we've got a possible vertical moment here as we're working through this horizontal timeline. So, um, And if you remember, we've got um, an interjection here from the front ensemble at 133 and 134, and this re um, then the brass and woodwinds interject back, another front ensemble moment, and then another interjection. So we want some sort of cool drill thing here. Um, full ensemble moment, okay. Um, and choreography or sequential drill moment. Okay, One of those two things would be really cool right there. We get here to measure 133 to 140 and we have uh, full ensemble playing with front ensemble uh, interjections. Front ensemble interjections. Okay. And we're going to continue effect 14. 
141 to 149. We're almost to the end of this movement. We've got a little um, hint of um, RCN coming in, bum bum bum, ba dum ba dum ba dum, uh, which is going to uh, project kind of towards the future and the closer. And then we've got some big moments here happening. So 141 to 149. We've got full ensemble. And we'll put with low brass melody so that we can stage them in a way that they can be successful. 148 to 149 is a battery moment. And then we've got ending chords here. So we've gone through this score and just start scribbling notes so that we know exactly what to prepare for. Um, we know who um, is doing what and who is soloing and where we need to place the melody. Okay. Now, you don't want to continue on to writing drill right away because you want to be able to set things up for what's going to happen in the second move in the next movement, which is technically the third movement, um, which happens with concert horn. So we, we've got to make sure we go in and do that. So continue on and try to uh, finish up uh, writing your notes for part two and three. I'll do that on my own and uh, place what I put on the website as well.